Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am doing a tour of a save file that I found by another plum bob. It basically turns your Sims 4 game into The Sims 2 with all The Sims 2 lore and characters. So as you can see we've got Pleasant View which is the default neighbourhood in The Sims 2 and Strange Town down here and Ordinary Springs is an extension of Strange Town and so is Pleasant View Plains which is an extension of Pleasant View. We've got Verona, where's Veronaville? It's Veronaville which used to be Windenburg but it's been changed. So I'm going to be showing you my um, gameplay rules as well as the tour of the, the, the households that I'm currently playing. I am not going to be doing Blue Water, Blue Water Village or anything because I haven't played those families yet and I will play them later on down the line but I'm planning on making this into a series where I show you every five years my progress because let, let me explain what I mean by that five years in sims time because I play with an aging system where one week slash rotation equals one year so that means every week equals one year in sims time and um I also keep track of their ages, I document their ages and I'm going to go through each of the households and explain what I've been up to because I've played like nearly every household that I want to play for my rotation except for, let me show you, let me just go to Veronaville real quick, where is it, there it is. So I have played nearly every household in Veronaville but I've still got three more to play, I'm still on the, um, the cat family over here and I've also got a few more to play but I'm playing them in a specific order according to the Sims 2 Prima Guide which uh, gives you a scripted events so first I'm going to start off with Pleasant View I'm going to show, I'm not going to be doing any of the community lots I'm just going to be doing the households and explaining what, what, how I've played them so over here we've got the Lafario family which this used to be the Goth family home but I've played the scripted events and Don and Cassandra have got married let me show you. and I've also updated their family bio to match like what's happened. So Cassandra is ready to start a family of her own, but can she tame the town Casanova? Now that Don and Cassandra are married, will it last the ages? So Don in the Prima Guide it suggested that you, you get Don and Cassandra married. And let's see what they've been up to. Okay, so here is Cassandra on the computer. So Don and Cassandra are now married. She's no longer Cassandra Goff. She is Cassandra Lafario. Now, I know it says that Cassandra's the oldest, but technically Don's the oldest, but they're both the same age, but Don was born first. So Don and Cassandra are both 31, and I have played this household for one week, so next time I play them, they will both be 32. And they're not going to have any children just yet because I, I usually wait like one or two or maybe three years after they get married before... Um, they have children because that's what people do in real life apparently like the average couple usually waits about three years before they have their first child after they get married so don works in the medical career he is a serial romantic he is a self-assured slob and he's also non-committal i also turn aging off so i can completely control my game when i say i control my game i mean it literally i control the genders of their babies the the when they die of old age or when they die of prematurely you know, I control literally everything about my game because I don't like it when something happens outside my control. So Don is, those are Don's traits and he's a serial romantic, obviously. He's a man whore. Uh, he's, a, he's in the, med, he's in the uh, doctor career, level four, a medical technic technologist. Cassandra is a junior tinkerer in the um, science career, level three. Now, when you first start playing this household, this will be the goth family home like i said but i've played this household through the scripted events so they um the lafario family live here now in my game so because i use this for personal game plan i'm planning on streaming it on twitch at some point and as you can see the family tree um more is she's she's the daughter of mortimer and she and mortimer is also married to dina caliente who's now dina goth and we'll get to them next and also, I forgot to mention, but this save file, if you are plan on planning this, playing this save file, and I will leave a link to how to download it in the description, you will need every piece of DLC 
that was released up until January of 2024. So, and if you don't, Sims will be walking around half naked, bald, and they will, um, there'll be stuff missing. But then you could just go through everything and like re redes redesign everything, like make over the Sims that, are mi that have missing pieces and, you know, but it could be too much hassle, so I had to download everything. Anyway. So let's move on to the uh, goth house. Oh, this is a haunted house, by the way. So it's frequently haunted by ghosts. And it's 4am because I'm not finished playing the cat family yet. So I'll I'll uh, go to the next household and show you what the next household that I play in my recommended playing order. So here we have the goth family. This is um, this used to be the uh, Caliente home. But now that Mortimer and Alexander have moved in after, they, after Mortimer married Dina. So let me, this is a rental lot, by the way, because they, they does use the for rent pack. So let me read you their bio. Was it just coincidence that the Caliente sisters arrived on the eve of Bella's disappearance? And is it, and is their interest in Mortimer physical or fiscal? Dina married Mortimer and got her wish of wealth and luxury, but how long before her, her greediness and irresponsibility kicks in? Little Alexander is caught in the middle of all this mess. So I have added like my own like, little thing to the uh, bio, like I said because I update the family bios as I play. So let's go into the goth uh, ha house. So as you can see here, we've got, well, I don't know why Dean is cooking at this time, but. So Mortimer is, even though he was retired in The Sims 2, he's still working as a mad scientist right now, which I let him keep because in my game, Mortimer is only 60 years old, even though he's an elder. So he's not gonna retire till 65. So he's got five more years left until he if retires. So he's 60 years old. His wife, Dina, is 23. So, yes, he's, his wife is younger than his daughter, which is strange, I know, and creepy, but anyway. Alexander is only eight years old. He's a child, so he's... Mortimer was quite old when he had Alexander. And also, Bella Goff is dead in the game. Let me just show you, if I can. Bella Goff is dead in the game because... Even though she was abducted by aliens, she died of poison. Because I imagine she, like, when she was abducted by aliens, the aliens poisoned her and she died. So, yeah. So this is the, the household. And Mortimer is in the science career, as I said. Dina is unemployed because she is notoriously... F she is notorious for being lazy and a gold digger. I also changed her aspiration from mansion baron to fabulously wealthy because that more suits Dina. She doesn't care about mansion, she just wants to be rich. Which she has completed because when she married Mortimer, she moved in and brought in a chunk of change. And she's completed her aspiration. But I don't bother changing it because I don't like, I only like keep them with one aspiration. So let's move on to the Calientes, which is just Nina Caliente. And I'll show you what's been happening over there. Okay, so this is Nina Caliente, who is uh, Dina's twin sister. She lives on her own. This used to be Don Lafario's condo. It's also a rental lot, so they live right next door. But I had her moved in when Don moved in with Cassandra. So th there's been a lot of moving around in this year. Well, this year, when I say this year, I mean like this rotation, because I, I play, I've only played this household for one year. This, 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 say, for one year in Sims time, I mean, you know what I mean. So Nina now has her own place, but that won't satisfy her woohoo desire. So I've updated the family bio. And let's see what Nina has, has um, been doing. Now, even though I have been playing for one year, I'm still talking about, like, as if it we're in year zero. Because, like, even though Nina and D Dina and Nina are meant to be 24... I'm talking as if they're still in the same, they're still like in year zero, because I always start in year zero, then I go year one, year two, year three, so we're in year zero, we're going to talk as if we're in year zero. Nina is 23, like her sister, and she is also romantically, and I forgot to mention their relationships, but Nina is romantically involved with Don, like the relationships are still the same as The Sims 2, basically, but... I forgot to mention that, but like literally everything about The Sims 2 is like made better in this save file in The Sims 4. So Nina is 23. She works, she's a villainous Valentine. And she, I put her in the doctor career when she, now when you start this save file, she will be unemployed like her sister. But since she's got a place of her own and she's gonna need to make money and I've got a little storyline planned for her when I um, 
when next year, when I start playing this household again, she's going to get pregnant with Don Lafario's baby, even though she is technically, even though he is technically married. But you know, it's Don and Nina. They're both like roman non-committal and romance sims. So she works level two in the doctor career because she's been promoted a few a few times this year. So this is Don. This was Don Lafario's condo, but he's moved out and Nina has moved in here. This is that the upstairs. Yeah, it's just like The Sims 2, only better. Now let's move on to the next household in my recommended playing order. So the next household I play is the Broke family who live in a trailer park here. So I have, I, now I have, since I've played through the scripted events, like Bo was originally a toddler but now he's a child. And they've been, there's been Bobby Broke who was, who was the unborn baby in The Sims 2 because when you start the safe world, Brandy Broke is pregnant. But I had to pause the pregnancy until I got round to this household because I, I'm a control freak. I like to control everything. So let me let me show their family bio. Okay, Brandy was left to raise two boys alone following her husband's suspicious pool ladder accident. With Dustin acting out, can Brandy teach young Bo to make the right choices in life? And I've also added this little bit here that says, Brandy recently had her third son, Bobby, but will this only cause more financial hardship? So, yep, so this is one of the most challenging households to play. So let me show you what the, this what I've done with this household. This isn't my safe file. This safe file was made by another plum bob. I'm just saying what I've done at, while I've been playing them. And I don't know why it says items removed because I've literally been playing this household with all the packs, everything that's meant to be required. So Brandy Broke. Okay, what am I saying? Brandy Broke is 37 years old. She's still a young adult. She won't become a, an adult until she's 40. Dustin is a teenager. He's 15 years old. When you start this, like I said, when you start this safe world, Bo was a toddler. He was three years old, but he was aging up that year. So he's four now. He's a child. He's four years old. And little Bobby, little Bobby Broke is not even one yet. He's still only an infant. So when, when I know I do play with the newborns, but only for one day. What well, one day then they add up to infants, and then ne the next time I play them, when when it's been one year in Sims time, or one week, depending on how you look at it, I age them up to toddlers when they turn one. I might explain my aging system in much more detail in another video. So let me show you their their, their um. So Brandy is family oriented, but she has the aspiration to be a market magnate. I did not add that, that came with the save file. Because in my mind, man, Brandy, I was about to call her Mandy then. Brandy is a family sim, but I just left that because it, cause I, like, I just like it for some reason. Dustin works in the, um, he works in the lawnmower career because there's no part-time criminal career for teens like he is in The Sims 2 but there's not 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 an option in The Sims 4. And Bo is a grade A student because I've played like I said I've played them for one week and he originally he was a C student when he started but he's he's much more good than his older brother. He Dustin is a C student and Bobby is just a little growing infant. He hasn't really got up to much yet. And let's move on to the next household. So the next household I play is the Dreamer family. So I haven't added anything to the family bio yet because I've only been playing them for one year and not much has happened in that year, unlike the other households. So we've got Darren Dreamer. I know it's a bit dark because I always turn the lights off when I send them to bed. And I, when, when I always switch households at, at, at Sunday at six o'clock. So most of the time they're still in bed at that time, so. That's why I haven't got the lights on. But anyway, Darren here, he is an adult. He's 45 years old. Dirk is a teenager. He's 15, like Dustin. He's the same age as Dustin. Um, Darren doesn't have a job. He is a freelance painter. So he makes all his money from his painting up here. And Dirk hasn't really got much to him. He's dating Lilith Pleasant, who is like the polar opposite of him. And I'll get to the Pleasant family next. And uh, also, I thought I might say before I switch households, Darren has a crush on Cassandra. But I've made, I've made, I've manipulated the story a little bit in my game, where Darren went to kiss Cassandra to show him how much he loves her. 
but he, she rejected him, and then he got into a fight with Don Lafario, even because Don's a hypocrite, he's a cheater, but he won't let anyone else cheat on him, because he's an hypocrite. But also, I thought I might mention, talking about age gaps with Mortimer and Dina, who is a massive age gap, Darren has a crush on Cassandra, but Cassandra is like 14 years younger than him, because um, Darren is 45, Cassandra's 31. So there's a massive age gap. But which isn't a pro which isn't like wrong in any way. I'm just saying like there's an age gap. Anyway, next household. So the next household is the Pleasant family. I ha again I haven't added anything to the bio because I think mean, well something has happened. Like Mary Sue caught Daniel cheating with the maid, just like the Sims 2. I've copied that storyline. And and uh, Lilith and Angela do not get along. But I have kept them together. I'll show you. I'll show you in a sec. So the storyline I've got planned is that after Daniel was caught cheating, Mary Sue, sorry, Mary Sue, like decided to forgive Daniel, even though she was reluctant at first. And they've decided to stay together because I want them to have another baby before Daniel cheats on her a second time, and then he, she finally has enough and kicks him out. So that's the storyline I've got planned. I've, I like to like plan things out and like have loads of drama because and they and I'm pretending they're in couples therapy. So anyway, Daniel is an adult. He is 42 years old in my game. Mary Sue is also an adult. She's 40, two years younger than Daniel. Angela and Lilith are both twins, teenagers. They are 16, so they're one. So they're both. They are, Angela is dating Dustin Broker, who is one year younger than her, he's 15, she's 16. And Lilith is doing the same with Dirk Dreamer, they're both one year apart. But, and even though it doesn't say here, in my game, Angela was the firstborn twin. That's why she's the favourite daughter. Now, Angela is a um, drama llama, she, I don't know if she's part of any clubs or anything, I don't know, no she's not. Because I have I have played this household and I didn't really bother with the clubs because I don't think they were part of any. At least I don't think they are because I didn't check at the time. I was just like busy playing with the drama and like keeping the girls away from each other and like trying to fix Daniel and Mary Sue's relationship. But uh, he is romantically involved with Caden Lanrak and this random townie. I don't I don't know what that happened. That happened off camera while I wasn't playing them because like sometimes relationships do build on their own. But anything important, I don't miss, like births, pregnancies, I don't miss any of that because I control all of that. But I can't do nothing about the relationships for some reason. Okay, and the, and the next household in Pleasant View we play is the Oldie family. I haven't made any changes to the bio because nothing has happened. And I just will say though that both Herb and Coral do not like Daniel for what he did to their adopted daughter, Mary Sue, because Mary Sue is the adopted daughter of um, Herb and Coral, and I'll explain, I'll explain more in a sec. Okay, so I imagine Herb and Coral adopted a child because I imagine, like, Coral can't have a child of her own because, uh, for, you know, because she's infertile, but, but uh, anyway. So I haven't made much changes to the household in the one year I've played them, but I will say that um, when you first start playing this household, the house is built, but it's not furnished. You'll have to furnish it yourself like I've done. Now, the Christmas tree was still up because it was um, Winterfest when I last played them. And we've got, and uh, so anyway, Herb and Coral don't have any jobs, but Herb does have a pension coming in from the, um, I can't remember what, the gardener career or something, I don't know. But anyway, Herb is an elder. He is 83 years old in my game. Coral is also an elder. She is 81. But, um, so they're quite old. They get, they're, they're, they Herb is the oldest sim in the game, in my game at least. He is 83 and the rest, are, so he's the oldest sim that I, in the game that I play with at the moment. And, uh, what was, anything else I need to say before, let me just go upstairs and show you the upstairs. Now these rooms, I am planning on doing something with these rooms, like, this is going to be, they're going to adopt another daughter because I want to give them something to do in their old age and I want, and, I've pair, and I'm planning on pairing her up, the daughter that they're going to adopt, with Bo, with Bo Broke when he gets a bit older. So I've got, I, I plan everything like, I plan who my sims date and everything because 
you know, I'm a control freak. And last but not least, we have got the Burb family. And the Gen Jennifer Burb is Daniel Pleasant's sister. And I haven't made any changes to the um, the bio yet, but that, but one thing that wasn't in The Sims 2 is they've got a dog named Tucker the second because in The Sims 1, when Johnny was a child, John was a child, they had a dog called Tucker, and now that that dog has passed away in The Sims 4 slash Sims 2 save file, another plum bob has added um, a dog called Tucker the second. So anyway, let's let's play. Well, we're not going to be playing. We're going to I'm going to show you them. So this is the last household in Pleasant View. Then we're moving on to Strange Town. So we've got Jennifer Burr. I know Jen Jennifer is not the oldest. That is not true. I'll show you. I'll show you in a sec. But this is their house. Again, their house was not furnished. I don't know if this happens in everyone's game, but in my game, their house was not furnished. It was built, but it wasn't furnished. So I had to do it myself. And uh, so John, work. I, I, he works. He doesn't have a career, but he does own a veterinarian clinic. Let me show you. A vet, a, a vet clinic. So um, he owns John Burb's vet clinic and he work, and that's it. I imagine that's where he works because he owns his own vet clinic. But Jennifer, on the other hand, works as a salary person, level um, one because I haven't got her promoted yet because I she still needs to work a bit harder. And I've been mainly focusing on John and his vet clinic and like hit their aspirations and stuff like that basically. Um. So anyway, their ages. John is thirty years old. Jennifer is twenty six, and Lucy is eight. Tucker is three. I keep track of the dogs' ages as well. So Tucker is only three years old. So next we move on to Strange Town, which was formerly Strangerville, but it's been corrected because this is a Sims Two save file in the Sims Four. You know how it is. So first off, we've got the Curious Brothers and. But they're not just the Curious Brothers anymore. They have had two new additions to their family because if you, in case you don't know, Pascal was pregnant with an alien baby and that baby was Tycho. And also the same year, the very same year, Vidkun got abducted and he had a son named Not So. Not So Curious, get it? Anyway, let me show you. So let me show you, let me just go through the ages real quick. So as you may know, the Curious Brothers are obsessed with aliens. When they got abducted by aliens and got probed and impregnated, they were, unlike most people who would have been terrified by the experience, they were actually happy with it. And now they've got alien sons. So let me show you um, their ages. So Pascal, even though he, he says he's the youngest of the brothers, he's not, not in my game at least. I'll age him up when he reaches the end of his young adult span. Pascal is 28 years old, Vidkund is 24, and Laszlo is 19. Now, he's not a teenager because when they turn 18, I turn them into young adults. I'll explain my ageing system in another video, but this is... Hold on, let me show you the babies. So, Tycho was born first. He's not one yet, he, it, neither one is one yet, but Tycho was born first, they're both zero years old, they're both infants, and Not So was born last. And I am planning on getting Laszlo pregnant at some point, but not just yet, maybe when these two are like one or two years old. But let me show you their house real quick, the attention to detail is amazing in this uh, save file. Each household is, a, and each house is amazingly decorated and built. The attention to detail is amazing. So. So the next household is the Spectre household, but it's not the Spectre household anymore because Olive Spectre, who was Ophelia, Ophelia Nigmos' neat auntie. So the bio reads, Olive Spectre's reign of terror ended with her death and she left everything to her niece Ophelia Nigmos, who is unwilling to follow in her aunt's footsteps. And yes, I have changed that bio. Um... Olive Spectre was a serial killer, for those who don't know, and she was, um, she killed a whole bunch of people, including her own family members and her husbands, and not even her niece, Ophelia, got much love from her. She treated her like a slave, a domestic slave, so, but anyway, let me get into the house real quick. So, as you can see, hold on, let me show you, where are they? There we are. So, this is Olive's garden, and not only that, but Olive is also buried here as well. Where is Olive? Is that it? Yeah, that's her. There's Olive Spectre. She's, 
she died at 70 years old and she was taken to hell by her lover, the Grim Reaper. Which is kind of fitting because she killed all her husbands. So, and it's kind of a fitting end for someone as cruel and evil as Olive. And Ophelia Nygmos is her niece. And she was 17 when we started the game. But now that she's... <coughs> excuse me. Now she's aged up. She aged up that same year and she's now 18 years old and she didn't go to university. She just decided to become a, an author or a writer. She's joined the writer career. Because uh, when you play The Sims 2, according to the, the Prima Guide events, because university wasn't created back then, they don't take that into consideration. And I don't either. And this is also a haunted house, like the Goth family home. So like, there will be poltergeists and ghosts keeping your um, sims awake all night in haunted houses. I don't often play with haunted houses and but I'm really glad they added it because now this is like a, a really good experience for me and I really enjoy it. So Ophelia is also dating um, Johnny Smith who is also the same age as her but we'll get to him in a sec. But one thing, I, one thing that Ophelia went through when Olive was alive was Olive never let her go out. She kept her under lock and, cl lock and key and she was basically treated like a slave. She made her do all the cooking, cleaning, gardening and all that. And she was never allowed out to see her boyfriend or never allowed a birthday party. In fact, she, her aunt, her only family member she had left, died on her 18th birthday at 70 years old. So anyway, let's move on to the next household. Next up, we have the Beaker household, which hasn't changed much in the one year I've been playing. So here is Loki Beaker and Nervous Subject. So he shouldn't be on the computer because Loki and Cersei never allow it. He is treated as a test subject and a slave like Ophelia was, but he's still, he's still suffering, poor, poor Nervous Subject. So let me go through the ages. Loki is 43 and Cersei is 41. Nervous is 22. And this is our, this is a Nervous's cell where he sleeps. And let me just show you the upstairs real quick. Where's Cersei gone? She's not here yet. Oh yeah, she is. I thought she was at work then. But anyway, this is their house upstairs. And Loki works in the science career. And Cersei works in the doctor career. And Nervous doesn't have a job because he, he stays home all day doing the cooking, cleaning and all that. Because he's treated like a test subject and a slave. Anyway, next household. Next household I play in my rotation is the Smith family. This is Ordinary Springs, which is an extension of the um, Strange Town. But it used to be Oasis Springs, but it's been corrected. I mean, in my opinion, this save file is the correct way to play the game. Just saying. Right, so this is the Smith family. I know it's dark again, but again, they were asleep when I switched households to play the next family. But I don't know why Johnny is in his towel, because he probably just got back from the gym. So this is, I call him Paul, as in P-A-U-L, like as in the name Paul, because I can't be bothered to call him by his full name. His name is Pollination Technician 9, Smith. But I just call him Paul Smith. Paul is 62. He is a stay-at-home dad. But he was a scientist. And he was an alien. Well, he's still an alien. You know what I mean? He, he was like, in space and all that. Jenny Smith is his wife. She works as a doctor. She is 56 years old. So she's got a few more years left before she becomes an elder. Johnny was 17 when we started. But it was his birthday when we started playing. And he aged up to a young adult at 18 years old. And his little sister, um, Jill, is eight. She's also eight years old. A lot of the children in this save are eight. In my game, at least. And also, I want to say, like, I know a lot of people... I'm not showing off my gameplay rules to inspire you to, like... To, like, play like I do. I'm just showing you how I play. Because I, I know it's a lot of documentation and it might take too long for some people. But this is just how I play. This is my personal preference. Since Johnny has aged up, he works in the uh, entertainment career because he is a musical sim. He likes to be, he wants he's all he, he's, he wants to be all about music, and he's also a party animal. So, 
I'm just going to say this now. For some reason, AJ Loner is not in this save file. I've looked everywhere for him, but the singles are. They're over here. But we're not going to be, be showing. Not going to be showing you them yet. I've got another house or before them. But I'll have to add o uh, AJ Loner at some point when I can. Next household is the Grunt family, which is a military family. One of my, one of my, well, I wouldn't say it's one of my favourites. One of the households I enjoy playing the most. So here is General Buzz Grunt. He is the, the patriarch. His wife is now dead. She was killed by Olive Spectre, one of Olive's many victims before she died. And so. General Buzz works in the military career, obviously, and he is 45 years old. His eldest son, and quite obviously his favourite son, who idolises his father, is Tank. He is 16 years old, and he also works in the um, lawnmower career, because there's not a military career. I was, If there was a military career for teens, I would have put him in there. His uh, middle child is... Um, Rip, Rip Grunt. He also has a job as a, um, what's it called, a fast food employee. And he is 13 years old. And their youngest, and his youngest son is a boy named Buck Grunt. No, Buck. I said Buck, not the F word, you know. Buck Grunt. And he is a um, child. He is eight years old. And this is their house, the ups, the downstairs, upstairs. Do they have a? They also have a basement, which is like I don't know what I'm meant to do with this because it's not because everyone's got a bedroom upstairs. But anyway, next household, and finally we've got the singles, the singles roommates. I feel like I've been doing this video for years, and I'm glad we've only got three households left. So, this is uh, the singles. They live in a rental apartment. And um, I'll show you their household. Now, a lot they have a they're not sisters necessarily, but they have got relations to others, the others in the um, in the world. Like, well, sh you'll see. So Erin is the eldest. She is twenty five. She is the sister of Loki Beaker. Then we've got Kristen, who is twenty three. She is, I can't remember who she's related to. Let me just double check. No, she's not related to anyone, never mind. And then Chloe and Lola are 21. They are the Curious Brothers sisters. They're both twins. And they're both aliens. And they don't have careers when you first start the game, but I've put them in careers now. So we've got team, so... Let me go to Erin because she's the oldest. She is in the business career. Kristen is an athlete. Um, Chloe is an actress. And Lola is also in the business career. And that's the singles household. That's all the households in Strange Town. Now we're moving on to Veronaville, which we've only got three households left, thank God. Also, I forgot to mention. There are like several townies that have moved in. I don't play them because I don't play with the townies. I just play with the uh, the households that have got the green plum bob around them. I don't play with it because I, I can't stop these townies from moving in. It's MC Command Center. I'll have to figure out how to fix that. But right now I can't. Anyway, let's move on to Veronaville. Where are you? There you are. The first household that I play in Veronaville is the Cap family. This, this neighborhood is based on Romeo and Juliet. And you'll see why in a sec, because the Cap family are enemies and they're feuding with the Montes. And Juliet is um, in love with Romeo. It's a classic love story, a star-crossed lover's love story. Anyway, let's show you. Now, this is Consort Cap. He lives with his three orphaned grandchildren, who are all siblings, in this massive, and I mean massive, house look at it look how big it is and it, yeah so so consort is 75 years old he's an elder but he's even though he's past retirement age i make exceptions for like business owners or business people and they would usually retire around 80 years old tybalt is the oldest of the siblings he is 16 years old 
Annie does not approve of Juliet. Neither one of them approve of Juliet's relationship with Romeo. The same and the same for Romeo on his side of the family. But they're in love with each other. What can you do? You can't help who you fall in love with. But Juliet is not the sec the middle child. She's the youngest. So I'll show you. Hermia is one year younger than Tybalt. Tybalt is sixteen. Hermia is fifteen. And then Juliet is thirteen years old. She's the youngest of the cat children. Now, in the original story by Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, at least, is 13 years old, but Romeo is meant to be 16. I personally don't like that because at 16, they, in my game, 16 years old means you can consent to woohoo. But I didn't like that a 16-year-old who can consent to woohoo is um, dating a 13-year-old who can't consent. So I've made them both 13, and you'll see in a sec. Also, I forgot to mention... Juliet is part of the dra a drama club. Let me show you. She's with Romeo, and she's part of a drama club, and uh, which is oh god, I can't get my words out. Which is a uh, which is accurate because she's part of a shake. She's from a Shakespeare play, and so she makes sense that she's part of a drama club with Romeo. Next up, we've got the Monty household, which is uh, the household of Ju Juliet's lover Romeo. All right, so we've loaded the lot. Now I know this is Isabella and Patrizio, and this is Mercutio, Romeo's older brother, and this is these are his grandparents. But Isabella is not the oldest in the family. That is uh, Patrizio. Patrizio is uh, seventy-five, like consort Cap, but they're both sworn enemies. And Isabella, his wife, is seventy-three. Mercutio is sixteen, and Romeo is thirteen, like I said. And uh, Ro when you and I will say like when when Romeo was when I first started playing this house, I I noticed that Romeo was a serial romantic, but I changed that to soulmate because I don't think he'd want to date a lot, whole bunch of Sims like Juliet. It is one and only true love, which makes sense because I don't think Romeo is a serial romantic. His, his aspiration is soulmate in my mind. Also, this family owns a restaurant, or at least Isabella owns a restaurant, and. Um, I think uh, Patrizio didn't have a job before. I think he just runs a restaurant with his wife. But if he, if that's the case, then yeah, it makes sense. But they both don't have any pensions coming into the house, so you'll have to work at the restaurant. And this is. Let me just show you their house. It's a log the cat family home. It's a massive house. This is the upstairs. It's huge. It's humongous. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Summer Dream family. Now, I'm saying this is the last household of the video, but I am going to be playing the other households as well. Like, this month, like, I'm currently on the Cap family over here when I'm playing the rotation. I haven't completed my, my first rotation yet completely, but I have played the rest of the households that I'm showing you in this video. But I am also playing the Bin families, but I haven't gone around to playing them yet. So, um, I've only like managed to complete the households that I'm showing you. So this is the last household I've completed. This is a summer dream family. Also, I want to say, if you are planning on playing this rotate this save file rotationally, good luck. You're going to need it because if you're playing like every single household, not just like the main households like I'm doing, but I am planning on playing the rest of the households at some point later in my rotations. But if you're going to play them all at once in the same rotation. Good luck. You're going to need it <laughs> because there's literally loads. It takes forever. I've been spending the past six days on, on trying to complete this rotation and I'm still not complete. I've still got three more households to complete. So anyway, so the Summer Dream family consists of Oberon and Titania, the parents, and their three adopted children, Puck, Bottom, and Aaron. Aaron wasn't originally included in the household when I started playing. I adopted him because I'm because when you start playing The Sims 2, one of um, Titania's wants is to adopt another child, and um, and I decided to do that anyway because that's what that's what she that's what um, I imagine she would have wanted in, in this safe hole. Anyway, so Oberon doesn't have a career, but actually he does, but he's freelance crafter, and this is his crafting machine over here. And I will say this household is sometimes a nightmare to to play because of these walls you can't get rid of them so um you, it's constantly look look it's so hard to get a nice view of everything you can't you'll have to like zoom in really close 
especially when you turn autonomy off and you have to keep track of every sim like I do because I don't let my sims have any free will. So anyway, Oberon is still a young adult. He is 35 years old. Titania is 33. Puck is 16. Bottom is 8. And Aaron, Aaron is just an infant. He is not yet one. So these are all the households in that I've been playing so far and I will make an update to this video which is five years later in Sims time and I'll show you my progress within the next five years and I'm planning on making this to a series like five years later, ten years later, fifteen like so, and so on and so on but it will take a long time as you can imagine because of all these households to play and I'll play every household for one week which is one year in my game and I'll turn aging off so I have complete control of everything the aging and all that and if you did enjoy this video please keep make sure you give it a like and, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already also if you want to download this save file and play with it yourself i will leave a link to another plum bobs website so you can download it and i'll see you all next time bye bye